Hi, um, and thanks for listening in. I'm a horticulture specialist with the National Center for Appropriate Technology based in Butte, Montana. I work with many farmers on this topic and many other market gardening topics through NCAT's ATRA project. Through ATRA, there are a lot of agriculture specialists that provide free technical assistance to farmers on a wide range of topics. We also have over 300 publications and an excellent website with resources such as ecological pest management. <clears throat> we have a database on that topic, online tutorials, and farmer forums. And you can see the, um, the web address right here and our 1-800 line. Today I'm going to give a brief overview about some of the principles of using crop rotations to manage weeds and then Christine will talk about how she applies these principles on her farm. Crop rotations can reduce weed pressure by eliminating the constant niche that monocropping provides for weeds with alternative life, alternate life cycles to thrive such as the season they germinate or whether they are annual versus perennial and their growth habits. I will be touching on how to advantageously use crop, cash crops in a rotation to manage weeds. How limited use of fallow combined with tillage can flush out and significantly reduce perennial and annual weeds. And finally, some of the cover crops that work best in a rotation with the specific goal of managing weeds. Of course, there are many variables that will either deter or contribute to your success in using rotations to manage weeds. Below are, are a few to consider, or on your screen are a few to consider. The type of equipment and tools that you, you, that you have access to. If you have limited equipment to seed and incorporate cover crops at key times, then that might not be the best option for you. Although there are a lot of added benefits to cover cropping, and I will talk about these, just touch on these a little bit later on in the presentation. How big is your farm? The size of your farm will affect your rotation and cover cropping practices. A one-acre farm will have a very different rotation system and strategy than a 400-acre farm. Your production practices. Later on, I suggest using short succession crops prior to a long season to long season or poorly competitive crops. This will work only if you are able to till in the crops before the weeds go to seed. And finally, the type of weeds will greatly affect how to develop a rotation strategy on your farm. On your screen is a table that shows a very simplistic rotation strategy for various crop types. There are examples of crops on the left of your screen that would be considered poor competitors for various reasons. The right column suggests crops to perceive these poor competitors with. You can use cover crops or cash crops, but the idea is that you are reducing weed competition prior to planting crops that compete poorly with weeds. <clears throat> so um, quick cash crops. <clears throat> Some examples of quick growing spring crops or cash crops are radishes, lettuce, baby spinach. These crops typically are mature within 30 days and they can be out of the field and either cover cropped or tilled for a summer fallow or another cash crop before weed seeds mature. So aggressive cash crops. These, cro these crops tend to compete heavily with weeds if they are managed properly. If a viney melon or winter, scrop, winter squash crops are mulched, they provide a dense cover and can actually be considered a weed cleaning crop. Potatoes are highly competitive with weeds. Add the fact that you are you're healing them a few times per season and they can actually really take care of weeds in a rotation. Soybeans are competitive, but in a vegetable crop rotation, you would probably use just edamame or you can use them as a cover crop. 
that it is really important to know your seed source with all the genetically modified soybean seed out there. <clears throat> As many of you know, this is not allowed for certified organic production. With these long season crops, it's also important to consider fertility when you're following with another crop. Another way to consider your rotation is by the type of weeds that are having an economic impact on your cash crop. On your screen is another simple table outlining the different germination times of weeds and which rotation can help to compete and manage them. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit of detail here. Spring germinating weeds such as henbet and chickweed can best be managed with a fall planted crop such as garlic or a fall planted cover crop such as a rye and vetch combination you see in this picture. This is April in the lovely Bitterroot Valley of Montana and this cover crop was planted in the fall, usually September in most temperate climates. <clears throat> it puts on the bulk of its growth in the spring when competition with spring weeds is most important. Summer germinating weeds, such as purslane and amaranth, can be set back through growing a few quick spring crops that are tilled in shortly after they germinate. If you see in this picture on your screen, there's the weeds in the lettuce off to the left. These will be tilled in shortly before they go to seed. Fall germinating weeds are similar to spring germinating weeds. They're cool season crops typically. They can best be managed through tilling in, in, tilling the, in the fall for spring crops to break their cycle. You can also manage fall weeds by planting fall cover crops earlier and at higher densities. With all of the benefits of keeping soil covered, fallow is not recommended for long periods of time, but it can be an effective weed management tool in a rotation if you time it right and use the right tools to manage your fallow. Bear fallow can help reduce perennial re roots and rhizomes as well as flush annual weed seeds from the soil. This can be especially beneficial during the seasons where you have the most weed pressure or timed with dry weather to dry out the weeds or roots. With correct timing, you can reduce your fallow period over time and replace it with cover cropping. In order to properly manage a bare fallow, it is important to have the right tools. Flame weeders can help with annual weeds, but they will not be as effective with the pernicious perennial roots of perennial weeds. Depending on the size of your farm, this can be as simple as a wheel hoe that you go over repetitively, or as big as a chisel plow. It is important to use a system that turns up perennial roots if you have a lot of perennial weeds. Using cover crops can significantly reduce weed populations if it is done right and you have the right tools to plant and mow at key times in your cropping system. Here are some of the principles that will help you manage weeds with cover crops. Plant aggressive cover crops that deter weeds. Avoid cover crops that promote weeds or are weedy themselves. And then you can use perennial sod or perennial crops that can compete with other weeds over a longer, longer period of time. There are several crops that compete well with weeds. Sorghum Sudan is a great competitor with weeds and produces a bunch of organic matter. Here you see a stand of sor my son sitting at, standing in a stand of Sorghum Sudan grass here at our farm. It does best in warmer climates and requires a lot of water to, re to achieve its optimum coverage. So th those are definitely considerations with growing Sorghum Sudan. Rye or rye and vetch in combination is considered an allelopathic plant that deters other plants from growing. 
In combination with Fetch, it provides considerable coverage and has the added benefits of fixing. And and if you're, it's in com combination with Vetch, it has the added benefits of fixing nitrogen. Buckwheat has um, big leaves and qu competes quickly. I'm just going to go back and show you this slide. This is a buckwheat, and you can see its big weeds. Um, or, or, excuse me, its big leaves, um, and it it grows quickly and competes with annual weeds. It can be harder to compete in fields with a lot of sod or other perennial broadleaf weeds, but it is nice because it completes its life cycle within three to four weeks and can be tilled in with a fallow period to follow. Okay, I'm going to get back to my next slide. So in order to most use cover crops effectively, you want to avoid cover crops that will encourage weeds. Um, some of these same cover crops that I talked about earlier can either become weedy themselves or cause weeds to germinate through spotty germination. For example, it is important not to plant vetch in certain cereal crops because it's, it has delayed, some of its seed has delayed germination and it won't germinate for one to two years. This grain cover crop on your screen will soon need to be cut and incorporated so that it does not go to seed and become a weed in the next crop. It is important, also, it is important to plant cover crop seeds so that you have a thick stand. If it is planted sparsely, weed seeds can germinate where there is light and soil if given the opportunity. Over a few years, you can determine what is the cost benefit analysis of your cover crop planting this density and the cost of the cover crop seed. But that's going to take a few years in rotation to figure that out. And finally, perennial crops, using perennial crops. If you have enough room to take land out of production and plant a perennial crop or sod, this can be very effective at breaking many weed cycles. In addition, this type of system will have the added benefit of adding organic matter. Some perennial crops, such as alfalfa or hay, can also be used as a cash crop. It is important to avoid certain grasses that can become problematic weeds in the next rotation, however. Using cover crops in a rotation not only benefits through weed management, but it has also a lot of other added benefits. They contribute to soil health. Here you see these, these nodules on this Austrian winter pea from our farm in Montana. They're a great source of, they provide a great source of nitrogen for our succeeding crops. They also help to break disease and insect cycles. It is important to monitor the types of weeds on your farm and evalu evaluate your resources before you come up with a rotation plan. A properly thought out plan can help you develop a rotation that will have a significant impact on weeds on your farm in the future. <laughs>